welcome to TSNN's monthly webinar series. Today's webinar will discuss technology and trends straight from EIBTM's 2013 Technology Watch competition. To submit a question or comment at any time during the webinar, please click on the Ask a Question button on the bottom of your screen. Simply type your message into the box and click on the Submit button. Michelle will answer questions during the last 20 minutes of our webinar, so please join in. Alternati alternatively, you can join the conversation and ask questions on Twitter, hashtag TSNN webinar anytime. At this time, it is my pleasure to turn the floor over to Ms. Arlene Shows, Marketing Manager for TSNN. Arlene, the floor is yours. Welcome on. Here is we are already educated and dig deep into the latest technology and trends which are coming straight from, to you, EIBTM's 2013 Technology Watch competition. We are fortunate enough to have Michelle Bruno speaking, so thanks for tuning in. A big thanks to our sponsors today, MCCA Advantage Boston and OnStream Media. They continue to help us deliver these educational topics to you free of charge. OnStream Media is a leading online service provider of corporate audio and web communications, including webinar and webcasting services. OnStream Media's innovative webinar platform, Visual Webcaster 4.0, allows event managers to easily produce, schedule, and invite attendees to a highly interactive, live, and on-demand webinar that can be accessed via a desktop or a mobile device. No downloads are ever required, and the solution can scale to support tens of thousands of attendees. The platform has recently been ranked number one by top ten reviews and is being used to power today's event. To learn more about OnStream's products, please visit OnStreamMedia.com. And now, Steve Snyder, Chief Information Officer for the Massachusetts Convention Center Authority, would like to say a few words on behalf of Advantage Boston MCCA. Steve? Thanks, Arlene. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to support uh, these type of events, um, specifically as one of the most technologically advanced convention centers on the planet. Uh, technology uh, and its implementation is near and dear to my heart. So um, I really appreciate all the hard work that you guys put in behind the scenes to making these things happen, and it's a pleasure to be able to sponsor them. So uh, with that, back to you, Arlene. Thanks, Steve. Allow me to introduce our speaker today, Michelle Bruno. She's an event industry blogger. She blogs for TSNN as well. Technology journalist. She's a publisher of the Event Tech Brief e-newsletter and a judge for the EIBTM Technology Watch competition. We can't wait to get started. Michelle, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Arlene. I want to begin by letting everybody know what we'll be talking about today. Uh, obviously, it's the EIBTM Tech Watch competition, but I want to specifically focus on the winner and why they were selected, what sort of technology they bring to the table, and why we felt it was among the 61 entries, the top entry. I'm going to talk about the largest category this year of technology entries, as well as all of the categories that we had entries in. I'm also going to give you some insight uh, from my perspective on trends that have emerged from the competition. And at the very end, we're going to talk about how event organizers can prepare for the innovation in meeting industry, meetings industry technology, because there's a lot out there, and it's, it's getting very difficult for all of us to wrap our arms around everything. So I want to talk also about the background of EIBTM. EIBTM is, is an event, part of a series of events owned by Reed Exhibitions. Reed, as probably many of you know, is one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, trade show organizer in the world. The competition itself is, I believe, 11 years old because I recall last year we celebrated 10 years, but it is the longest running of technology competition among all competitions. So when you think about 10 years ago, what they must have been reviewing, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting how it's evolved and where we are today. I've been uh, involved for three years, so I've gone through three entire judging cycles. This year we had 61 entries. And part of our commitment as judges, we go through each and every entry. It takes 
10 to 12 hours for each judge to review every entry, look at all the supporting documentation. We rate every single entry with points up to 100 in three different categories, which I'll explain a little bit later. And I wanted to just also let you know what kind of bench we have for our judges. Corbin Ball is the chairman of the judging committee, and as I'm sure most of you listening today know about Corbin, his uh, endeavors, he's, he's a leading speaker. He very early on targeted technology as the subject of most of his presentations. He's got a, a, a fantastic website. He has a directory of event technology suppliers, and 10 years ago, he and IBTM cooked up this technology watch competition. So he is who we have to thank and to blame. Martin Sirk is the CEO of TICA, as we finally refer to the International Convention Center Association. Paul Hussey is Development Director of BSI, which is Event uh, Travel and um, Meetings Management Company. Bruce McMillan is CEO of Bandwidth Management and Consulting, of, uh, an event industry consultancy. Uh, I've been introduced. Rud Janssen is Managing Director of the New Objectives Collective. Uh, he talks about events, mostly hybrid types of topics, but is a very, very uh, forward-thinking individual in, in his practice and is, is, along with Corbin, also one of the go-to grand, grandfathers in, in the event industry and the meetings technology industry. And this year we have a, a brand new judge, so I'm no longer the only woman, um, Christine Fuchs, who is head of sales at Horizon T Jobs, which is a, a, a sort of a monster.com for PR and marketing jobs based in Germany. So we come from a, a very diverse background, all of the judges. Um, the, the criteria is interesting. We put 40% of the points, well, 40% well, of the, the point total is developed, is, is dedicated toward innovation and uniqueness. We look specifically for technologies that are, that are very new, that are addressing specific trends going forward. We ask the um, people that put in submissions to tell us how their technology differs from others, especially other competitors. So we're really looking for uh, technology that sort of jumps out. Uh, we, we like to think of it as disruptive, although it, it doesn't have to necessarily be a brand new, uh, you know, form of technology that's never been invented. We also look for existing technology that's either being used in a different way or has um, evolved to, to become something that's substantially different uh, throughout its evolution. 30% uh, of the score goes to impact in the meetings industry. So for example, it could be a very innovative and unique technology, but if it really doesn't move the needle within the meetings industry, uh, it, it won't score as highly. And the final category is sort of complete completeness of the product. There's, there's a lot of startup technology. There's a lot of really great ideas. But we do look for a business model and a type of technology that's fairly well on its way, as we say, fully baked uh, to serving the market um, so as to differentiate that technology for just ideas on a cocktail napkin. And so we, we ask the, the submitters to sort of tell us what events they've been serving or what kind of technology they're using so that we can understand that it's just not something that, um, you know, they, they dreamed up overnight and it's not really a reality yet. So I want to focus, of course, on the winner this year. Uh, we were very pleased that um, Genie Connect, with their uh, Marketing Connect product, won. We felt um, you're here. We, you're seeing a, a quotation from Corbin about the fact that Genie Connect has now developed from a mobile app provider. Uh, they've evolved into more of an ecosystem of marketing and data collection and the ability to use the data in a very actionable way. So as Corbin says, he, it's taking business intelligence and creating a, you know, basically a, a platform for uh, uh, business, uh, suggestions 
it's in an, uh, a suggestion engine that then translates those suggestions that it's gleaned from both uh, mobile app data, uh, where people click through and what they're interested in on the mobile app. It looks at the registration and profiles. It takes uh, information from exhibitors and sessions that people are attending and preferring and visiting online. And it aggregates all of that information such that uh, organizers can then formulate questions and send email messages to attendees so that they can actually make purchases or, um, you know, switch their behavior midstream based on what they've been actioning, you know, and, and selecting throughout the conference to date. Um, the platform begins pre-event. Um, but it also collects data during the event and gives users a very um, concrete way to then make decisions during after the event. So to us, Genie Connect in their Marketing Connect platform really put, connected all of the dots. They managed to not only take the data, which many other platforms are doing, but make the data actionable. And for that reason, we felt that they, among all of the other entrants, um, uh, earned the right to be the winner this year. But I want to make it very, very clear that those that we also gave honorable mentions to were very, very powerful solutions that each, in their own unique way, offered something that to us um, we saw as innovative and also represented a trend in the industry. And it was it's, it's a very difficult um, decision at the end of the day. We felt very strongly that these four companies as well uh, provided very strong submissions, are very interesting companies, have very sophisticated solutions, and I'll, I'll go through each of those, but uh, they are in no way, you know, should be, you know, subordinated to what Genie Mobile and Mini Connect and, and Marketing Connect have done. Um, they're very strong in their own right. But they just went a little bit different direction than uh, we felt that, uh, that Marketing Connect went. So Tap Crowd has a, a particular solution called Tap Target for Events. It's a mobile marketing platform that um, creates a, um, it's involves a mobile event app that uh, becomes a powerful communication channel. So what we loved about uh, Tap Target was the use of geofences, which is a digital technology that literally forms a digital fence around a particular object so that as a, an attendee crosses over the threshold of that fence, they can start receiving very unique content. It also integrated user profiles, uh, push notifications, and, and what it's doing with its technology is taking all of the content and it's contextualizing it and serving it to attendees on a very micro level based on relevance and based on what the attendee has indicated that they want. So uh, we, we love the fact that it's, it points to a trend in this sort of bringing all the content of an event down to from a macro level to a micro level using mobile technology. Poll Everywhere is very interesting and scored very highly because they really are they are the you know sort of the grandfather of polling at events. Before Poll Everywhere came along, which is an online cloud-based platform now, uh, people used all kinds of mechanisms to participate um, in terms of the audience participating in a, a specific presentation. When Poll Everywhere came along, it was it was pretty much a revelation that you could use your mobile device, you didn't have to use a separate clicker or a, you know, a beeper or you know, press any kind of um, object in order to participate in polls within presentations. And now they've evolved their platform to the way that the information is presented. It can go up as a bar chart, a text wall, a live updating word cloud. And it, it's, it interested us because it, it has evolved to the point where it really is this type of technology, a fundamental 
piece of the of the audience partici participation pie, um, if you will, of all presentations now. Um, we've gotten beyond the just um, presenter to audience model, and now the audience is able to fully participate through Poll Everywhere and similar platforms, and we think that that really, um, you know, points to a trend of audience engagement and audience participation. Social tables, uh, we, we found so interesting because while there are other platforms that do what social tables does, which basically is um, it's an event uh, design platform, it designs floor plans, it creates seating arrangements, it allows guests to check in, and it, it renders an entire room of tables and staging and, and everything that's in a room into 3D. Um, the way that they've presented it using the cloud and the power of cloud computing makes it very, very easy for uh, event planners to use, but also event planners and venues and everyone involved in, in the room design to participate uh, via the cloud. And that for us um, was, was good because it eliminates any, any having to download software onto a computer and it really takes cloud computing into the meeting room in a way that is easy. And it was also a very economic um, offering. The price point is very, very, very nice and it's very, very favorable. And we thought it opened up a brand new window for event planners. And finally, Conferize. Um, again, um, we're looking towards trends. We're looking for very um, powerful platforms that are leading us into a direction in terms of, of event industry technology. And Conferize is a, glo a global online platform that allows the live event experience, um, the, the um, presentations, the speakers, um, all of the event content to be placed on an online networking platform and uh, be, become available to remote attendees or remote um, access um, individuals, uh, remote people that, that haven't even attended the event, um, just a community that will begin forming around the event content and allow them to either live or um, after the fact participate in the event um, through an online platform. And what we loved, like the winner last year, Bob TV, we loved the fact that uh, Conferize also creates a bridge between the face-to-face -face and digital environments that now exist side by side, but in the future will exist as one. And the nice thing about Conferize, unlike uh, Bob TV at this time, is it will also provide live streaming. So you can see, and I'll talk about more about the specific trends, but you can see really from, from both the winner and from the honorable mentions where we are going um, in terms of meetings industry technology and what's going to become important. So what was interesting to me is, is the way that all of these technologies broke down into the different categories. This year, more than, than I think in the past two years during my tenure, there, there seem to be a lot more categories. Although we have um, categories that continually appear, continuously appear, um, there were some new ones, but a lot of, of the same types, but I think it's interesting to look at the different platforms. So again, um, obviously we have mobile event guides. I think we had many more last year, and we actually devoted our honorable mention category entirely to mobile event guides. Um, this year we still had very strong uh, a mobile event guide presence, and, and the mobile event guides that we did have this year also are, are iterating into very powerful directions. So before, I would say last year was maybe 2.0. I think we're into 3.0. Uh, the things that they're doing, um, taking the event guides to another level is very, very interesting. We had um, also several entries in the event management software category, um, both on the cloud and um, with, um, including mobile extensions to their event management uh, platforms. 
we had many online directories this year, which, which to me was a little surprising. I didn't see to see that many last year that I recalled, um, online directories to find suppliers, to find venues, to find uh, places where you can actually book a video conference. So there's a lot of uh, directory sort of informational online platforms in that category. We had online video platforms uh, that will enable you to put videos online from wherever, but specifically from events, and make it easy for uh, um, remote uh, you know, attendees to access the video in particular. We saw for the first time a uh, very specific project management for event planners. We see a lot of um, event management software, but I've heard in the past and I've gotten requests for specific project management that planners can use. And we had a very nice um, entry this year from a project management platform. We've seen every year companies uh, providing e-posters, so taking paper posters from scientific and medical meetings to the poster, or to the um, electronic poster category, and we had uh, several entries in housing management. Other categories included indoor location solutions, which are very interesting to us. We've seen them in the past, Wifarer won last year um, for an honorable mention, but we're seeing a lot of use of beacons, beacon technology to triangulate locations, creating heat maps and, and different types of, of ways that event organizers and meeting planners can understand where their attendees are physically in the venue, and we think that's going to be um, a, a a more represented category in the future. We had a submission talking about websites and web marketing. And as our industry gets more involved in content marketing, websites that integrate both social and content marketing tools, we feel will become more obvious and more popular. Uh, there are several categories, several submissions in online meetings, virtual meetings and conferences, so that continues to be of interest to our, our industry. I have networking in red. I'm going to talk more specifically about networking, but that was the biggest category this year. Mobile apps and different types of applications that facilitate attendee engagement and networking between exhibitors and um, attendees and attendees with each other. Also um, had one submission for a mobile charging uh, platform, which obviously is very, you know, much in need at all events these days, and and lots of submissions uh, for RFP services. This, the idea of electronic RFPs is very strong and very active. And finally, virtual event platforms. Um, trade shows and conferences, again, which are a little bit different than online meetings. The online meetings I'm referring to is more like, um, well, OnStream, for example, uh, versus the virtual event platforms are more like trade shows and conference, conferences with rooms and, and things like that. So it's a very different presentation of technology. And then finally, The last grouping is online venue booking services. Um, I put that in the event category, but these are very specific ways that planners can book um, meeting rooms and hotels and things like that. Um, there was a good presence of virtual tours, both using Google Maps and, and all kinds of 3D technology to allow people on site tours and, um, and even just online on websites. Tour, te view, tour venues or tour destinations. There was an online travel planning um, solution presented, an event news platform, which allows trade show organizers specifically to have a news feed from exhibitors. That was submitted this year, and, and we really did like that. Video conference, conferencing room booking platforms, um, an interactive graph, which was very interesting. Um, it, it took us by surprise, but it most reminded me of, of uh, ways to look at mind mapping. 
solutions that, that some of us are familiar with and actually physically put that onto a screen and then put the screen into, for example, a presentation room or even a hotel lobby. But it was a way for um, viewers to see the connections so that um, they could maybe um, explore content that was all related or explore exhibitors that were somehow related. So it was a way to kind of visually connect areas of interest and areas of, that, are, that are visually related. So very, very interesting. Um, and also audience response and polling, like the poll everywhere, but there were also other submissions in that category which were very interesting. Finally, um, online surveys. We also had submissions for abstract management, which we've had in the past. Guest check-in solutions, just standalone solutions, and registration, um, you know, full-blown registration solutions. And also, um, something we hadn't seen before, virtual characters and avatars, uh, a submission in that category. So I wanted to also to bring it back to networking. We saw probably at least seven of the 61 solutions were in networking categories. So obviously that is either a need or a challenge or a very large category that technology providers are addressing. And they're doing it in different ways. So, so one submission was around electronic badges. So it's physically a piece of, of hardware that's worn as a badge on the attendee, and it allows you to connect with other uh, attendees very easily and automatically. There were several online matchmaking and appointment setting um, solutions, both using mobile devices or websites before the event to sort of match up peers and also match exhibitors to attendees in different ways so that an attendee can actually go into the event and already know the, the other attendees or the other exhibitors that match their profiles. Um, a lot on mobile applications used for information exchange, so downloading apps onto uh, mobile devices, iPod, iPads and mobile phones, and be able to exchange information very easily um, with attendees standing near each other. Also USB sticks and ways to use um, very interesting NFC technology that's tapped and put together in order to exchange information. And then the USB sticks can also be sort of containers for specific information about uh, particular products and um, companies or sponsors so that that information is also transferred from stick to stick. And also various types of engagement platforms and communities so that people can engage with other um, attendees and, and um, exhibitors and speakers and whomever from, that are participating in the event. But networking and, you know, electronically connecting and engaging um, with one another was, was the largest category by far this year. So insights. For me, these are the things that, that I walked away from um, thinking about. And that is the, the innovation that's focused, in, focused on existing product improvement versus disruption. So what I noticed and what we talked about um, with the other judges that this was definitely a year where you saw uh, existing solutions, existing platforms, rather than disrupt, they actually evolved. So in other words, we've seen now at least during my participation, year one was perhaps the mobile explosion, and year two was when mobile really came to the forefront and, and started becoming um, more widely adopted. But this year, the mobile platforms not, have already reached adoption, so they've really evolved into, into the next stage of mobile. And, and that's true for even the honorable mention um, solutions. Um, social tables, for example, is an example of 
of, of, a, of a technology that in and of itself was not terribly disruptive, but it's evolved to be a very user-friendly, a very nice solution, a very good price point. And of course, being on the cloud, it's very easy um, for the users to collaborate. So that's just an example. There, there were no sort of, you know, brand new things that we had never ever seen before or thought of, of before, but there was a lot of innovation on existing platforms. And we think that that's, that's very important to think about because maybe it's a way that um, we as a meeting community, while we want us to look for the big new shiny object, we want to also look to our, our favorite partners and see how they've evolved the platforms that, that we've already been using and that we love. Data capture, connecting the dots on data, is of course very big. Um, there really isn't any of the solutions uh, around that don't think about data and metrics um, in terms of decision making or planning events for the future. But what was really interesting about this year is um, Genie Connect and its Marketing Connect solution, again, took the data collection and, and evolved it into what is going to be the future, and that is creating, taking all the data, creating suggestions, and then making the data actionable. And for that reason, the data capture and analysis um, is now moving to sort of its third um, evolution, which is making the data actionable for the event planner, not just allowing them to take the data and put it in their CRM platforms, but actually staying within the same platform and solution and allowing that data to, to now move the needle for the planner right in the same platform. The other insight is this obvious desire for the meeting community to reach virtual audiences in, in a very big way, in a new way, um, especially in, in the um, conference world and the trade show world. We understand um, that it's very important now for live event organizers to begin creating and digitizing their live content so that they can reach a much wider audience. We saw that last year with Bob TV and we're seeing it this year with Conferize and the other uh, you know, virtual platforms. It is very important to the meetings industry um, and it will continue to be critically important going forward so that we can reach more people to actually come to the live events or purchase products and, and maybe they never will come to live events but understand where this content is coming from and become more familiar with the organizations and the events that it's being derived from. And finally, this idea that opportunities are being automated. I mean, to me, uh, thinking about um, electronic RFPs, thinking about platforms and directories that allow you to find opportunities, and also the, all the matchmaking and networking. It, it, there's a, just a big push towards Autom automating uh, the way that we connect, the way that we find information, and that will, we feel, be a continuous and continuing trend going forward. And that was a huge insight that I took away this year from the Tech Watch. So trends. Again, platforms that blend face-to-face -face events with digital environments. We're seeing just about everything that can be digitized <clears throat> and placed in the cloud, placed on the cloud. And if it's not on the cloud now, it will be in the future because cloud computing has evolved to be critical and important way to um, experience these platforms and ways where we, we can, in multiple locations, collaborate on these platforms. Data activation, taking data and making it immediately actionable for planners. This refinement of mobile applications, now you'll, you'll see much more movement beyond uh, the mobile event guides and see all kinds of platforms with mobile extensions. The idea that you can have any kind of platform or any kind of technology solution without a mobile dimension, uh, it, it will continue to, to evolve, but we'll continue to understand the role that mobile plays in, te in technology solutions at all levels. The relevance of content and the way to take content down to a very micro 
level, a very personalized level, is a trend that we're going to continue to see. And also the ways that audiences can engage and not just be, you know, people walking like zombies through an event, event environment or sit in a presentation, they will now have a very important role over and above or including the presenter. And the presenter will have to become actually much more uh, technology savvy because now the audience will be armed with all kinds of tools, second screens, uh, polling techniques, technology, even remote uh, audiences will be able to tune into a live conference going forward so that this presenter, poor presenters in the future are going to have to really learn how to both handle a live audience, a remote audience, and also handle how this audience is going to now be able to engage and ask them questions and actually move to a dimension that they've never experienced before. So the TechWatch competition for me uh, points out still the challenges that planners face. What, what we look for and what we see is ways that technology companies are actually addressing challenges that we face. And besides the fact that there's so much technology coming out and the fact that all of these standalone solutions now need to be integrated, what these platforms are beginning to address for us or, or illuminate for us are the continuous challenges. And those, those challenges really are um, the way that we need to simplify human connection. We are now creating very large events with thousands of members and, and attendees and hundreds and hundreds of exhibitors. And how do we bring that, those connections down to a very manageable and palatable and consumable level? And we're seeing technology that allows us to take all kinds of content, not just information from exhibitors or information from organizations or from sponsors, but ways that we can, we can bring it down to a very digestible level and that attendees can walk away with it on a USB stick, on a platform, and they can consume it later. So, and also ways that we can discover and find other people that are exactly like us um, as attendees attending these same um, conferences and trade shows. We see a continuous challenge for automation, automating these event processes in very user-friendly ways and in competitively priced ways, and we can thank the cloud for that. Uh, we're seeing challenges continuously um, in procuring properties and vendors, um, there's a, and the ERFP um, types of technologies are ways that we can do that very easily. Um, I kind of feel sorry for the properties and the vendors because now they have many more RFPs to field, but um, from the planner perspective, um, the, the way that we can, you know, procure properties and actually book them online is a challenge, but it is being addressed. Um, discovering all of the different venues and suppliers and solutions, so now we can put in event criteria and very easily discover these, where these venues and convention centers and, and even rooms live on the Internet and how we can find them. Addressing the mobility issue, we know that everyone has a mobile device. We know plant, mobile device. Planners have mobile devices. Attendees have mobile devices. And every single solution that's coming online has got to address the issue of mobility, ways to distill the information and optimize it from, for mobile. And we are seeing that, but it continues to be a challenge. And again, attracting new audiences. It's a challenge for organizers and event planners that have only lived in a, in a one-dimensional or two-dimensional world inside the physical event space. They are now needing to explore and have easy ways for them to find um, ways to bring digital experiences to their live attendees. So how can organizers prepare? 
Um, there, there, there's also a lot of information available, but I can tell you what I use, and I think that it's there are even decision-making blogs and, and tools out there. But I find among the most important and illuminating solutions for ways to learn about the technology and how it's applied, um, obviously engage in social media because the developers and the platform providers are on uh, social media channels, particularly Twitter. There's a hashtag called Event Tech where uh, the solution pri providers are tweeting a lot. There are lots and lots of groups on LinkedIn dedicated to various types of technology, particularly social technology. So look toward LinkedIn groups and also within your own organizations that you're members of. Um, most of them have uh, even member, members only groups that uh, address technology. But also there's a lot of great websites. I mean, I've created one, eventtechbrief.com, but there's also Meeting Pool. Corbin Ball has a great website um, and a newsletter that comes out every other month where he really highlights great technology. Um, event Manager Blog, uh, Julius Solaris out of uh, London. Is, is a fantastic blogger and does a lot for the event community. And Liz King Events has a blog. She compares and has like event um, apps of the week. And of course, Bob TV uh, is an entire content platform. But if you go in there and look, there's, we, we look for a lot of event industry content, so you find a lot there. And then I want to give a nod again to Julius created a fantastic event app Bible about a month ago, and it's on the Event Manager blog website. It's free, but he did a lot of work, and he's also coming out with a registration solutions Bible um, in the near future, and they're fantastic uh, resources for people to use. And you can also email me, tweet me, uh, you know, contact me, and I'll help to refer you to other resources. Obviously, TSNN uh, with its webinar series is also another great uh, way to get event industry technology. And now we will take questions. Um, from people in the audience. So, um, I've got a question here that is about anyone, uh, does anyone propose remotely distributed conference excerpts, a kind of simulcast for those who cannot attend an event but who want to be able to learn what's happening? Yeah, there are several different platforms and applications, which, Peter, I will be happy to send you information on, on the one specifically that, that I was submitted uh, to the Technology Watch. But I'm not really sure what you mean by the, the simulcast. I know for a fact that some of, I, I believe, um, OnStream does something like that. But I've also seen in Expo has a simulcast sort of business platform for those things. So yes, there are definitely platforms out there. Um, I'll, I'll communicate with you offline about which ones that I know about. But. Um, you know, as I mentioned in the presentation, there's, there is definitely a strong push, especially from event organizers and people that have live events, to find different ways to distribute that event content. I know um, from curating Bob TV content and the, the feedback that we've gotten, um, the users are looking for snippets rather than hour-long sorts of presentations. So going forward, I expect that these types of simulcast uh, platforms will also be looking for um, much shorter ways to present uh, video content. And I think it's going to be a very, very exciting new area that we move through. Another question um, also from Peter is, if, it, if technology is allowing us to capture more precise information, who is focusing on whether or not the information is accurate? There is a limit to what technology can assimilate. Since 80% of what we communicate to one another is performed nonverbally. So I guess, Peter, what you're asking is, um, I, I agree with you that now in, in the new digital realm, um, a lot of the content is 
coming to us via via video and maybe text and pipe podcasts and and all kinds of webinar webinar types of technology. It's not obviously one to one verbal communication. Um, that is definitely a challenge. However, uh, these technology platforms are dealing with that appropriately, especially through video. And <clears throat> what I gathered just just a couple of days ago from from the millennials, they've already figured out how to communicate in nonverbal ways, and they're able to actually treat the um, online platforms almost in their minds very similarly to face-to-face um, -face types of verbal um, communication platforms. So for them, um, these platforms are starting to blend into sort of one communication platform. And also, you know, to address your, your question about or your thought about um, who's focusing on whether or not the information is accurate. Um, I think no one and everyone, uh, just with just like all content that's online, there really isn't you know a verifiable way to determine whether the information is accurate. We count on users to do that for us, and also, I mean, one thing we we've seen is various platforms trying to create sort of advisor-like uh, platforms. So sort of like a trip advisor, but for the meetings industry, I mean, that's definitely uh, a type of technology that people are, are thinking about and trying to adopt to our event industry, uh, which will mean that there will be sort of live rating systems and, and content um, you know, voting systems and ways to bring content that's good up to the surface. So we will be relying on those kinds of tools in the future to sort of decide whether something's accurate and good. So hopefully that will that will help you think about ways to to understand and consume information going forward. Um, a question about, do you see a time when virtual events replace bricks and mortar? If so, under what circumstances? So I don't, what I've actually seen is the opposite. And I know that, 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 that what I'm going to tell you is sort of the standard answer um, for people that really defend face-to-face -face events. But what I can tell you is that what the digital environment, what both social media and um, online platforms that provide virtual experiences and even webcasting platforms have, have really done, and you can ask anyone that's had this experience, is allowed us to be introduced to other individuals, other content, and other events in the virtual realm that makes us all the more curious and has compelled us to attend events where not only the content that we found interesting online is being distributed, but the people that we met online, <clears throat> um, it, it's helped us to be exposed to where they now um, <clears throat> attend and exist and actually um, you know, are, are there in person, and we get very excited about uh, tweet ups and and live events where we can make appointments with the people that we met online and can now meet in person. So I would say to you that um, I, you know, I can't ever say that um, virtual events will replace live events. But I would strongly suggest that my personal experience and the data that I've seen suggests just the opposite. And in fact, um, virtual experiences are now augmenting live experiences in such a way that I expect that really good face-to-face -face events, those that can now um, address the digital environment appropriately and in really good ways, um, will actually be stronger going forward. So other questions, um, and yes, the slides will be made available afterward. The slide that you see, RJ, um, will tell you how to access the entire webinar afterwards. Um, another question, for face-to-face -face events, 28% is about the maximum penetration of mobile platforms based on average industry usage stats. 
72% is relying on on-site. Not enough is being done on digital outreach on-site for the uh, attendee outreach. Any comments? Oh, that's interesting. Um, let me think about that. So 28% is what the penetration of, of mobile platforms are based on average industry use. And 72% is relying on site. I can't say that I, that I completely understand the question, but um, in terms of what's being done for digital outreach on site, um, I'm, I'm guessing what you're talking about is taking what's happening on site, what's happening in the live uh, event, and actually pushing it out so that attendees that are not there, that are, are you know, in a digital environment, in a, in a remote setting, can actually experience the events. I will say that that is coming. That is definitely something that we're seeing. Um, and I think it's a very, very important thing. And, and it, it sort of dovetails with the question that we had right before that, which is, you know, our, our, um, you know, digital and virtual events going to sort of cancel out the live. No, it, it's going to be um, technologies that exist uh, so that people that are physically attending the event um, can experience it live, and people that are remotely attending the event can also experience it in a, in a very expanded and, and full-featured and robust way. And that's going to grow the two environments side by side. So I, I agree with you um, that we, we're going to see more of these platforms, um, both in, in the physical space and in the, in the virtual space, bringing the two environments together. Okay, um, let's see. I think that that brings about most of the questions, unless Arlene, you're seeing questions that, that I don't see. Um, anything new? I guess I'll, I'll just say in sort of summing up, uh, you know, what, what we saw this year during the EIB TM Tech Watch um, competition was a lot of really great technology going to the next iteration. Uh, we saw with our winner and our, our um, honorable mentions, uh, very exciting use of data, very exciting use of the cloud, and very exciting use of content um, being delivered on a micro level. And, and we just love doing this competition every year. We hope that content providers who are out there that are experimenting with different types of, of um, content and delivery mechanisms that appeal to the trends and also um, technology tools that are, are reaching very exciting, exciting stages consider entering next year. Um, there's some fantastic benefits. You get a free booth in Barcelona and you get lots of recognition from the read PR and promotion staff. So it's worth entering. I don't believe it costs any money. And um, we all look forward to seeing you on the in the EIBTM competition going forward. Thanks so much. And this ends our webcast and our webinar for today. What I will like to say in closing is that, again, the webinar will be available at tsnn.com slash webinars in a couple of days. So you'll be able to, be able to go to that website. Um, I apologize for not having the Academy Award winning slides than I normally have, but I hope you've enjoyed the content. And I would love to thank our sponsors today, the Massachusetts Invention Center of Authority, MCCA, and Advantage Austin, as well as Lunchstream Media, who is providing the platform for today that, that I can tell you has been very easy to use, and I've really loved working with OnStream over these months of webinars. So I thank you so much, and again to our sponsors, and hope you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much.